to the creator, not bowing to the created. Now I can stand bold in my heart and mind is sober. Looking to see a sign, my staff turned to a cobra. With magic, they did the same. Refuse to fear his name. Hearts remain hard to their firstborns were slain. The knowledge you have is vain. Chakras and Kundalini's Kabbalah, tree of life, witchcraft and genies, mystery school teaching. Of course, it gotta be right. You know it all. Somebody gain eternal life. Were you there when he made the earth? When he formed man's bones, only used the dirt. Were you there when he made the planets? Please tell me how he did it if you understand it. Were you there when he made the heavens? And all of their array rested on the seventh. All you have is speculation and theories. Gave us basic commands, we comprehend them clearly. What's the purpose of living? What's the purpose of dying? Who do you believe when everybody is lying? How do you wait? Second. Mm -hmm. So here again, just as in the question that we looked at regarding Corinthians 1 and 16, we got a question of whether we see Yah in Torah, uh, whether or not we see in Torah evidence of Yah giving his authority to anyone else. Then, then we can know if him doing it with Yahushua was wicked or against Torah. In other words, if we see, if we see a precedent of Yah giving his authority to anyone in Torah, then that'll let you see that just when he did it with Yahushua, it wasn't nothing new or different or wicked. Make sense? Okay. Um, here we see a chain of authority with the name included and instructions to follow. Uh, John 5:43. John 12 and 49. What's that? Let's read that real quick. John 5, 43. Yeah. Because not just on, there's not just the authority being given, but it's the authority and the name. John 5, 43 says, I have come in my father's name and you do not receive me. If another one comes in his own name, him you will receive. Let's look at John 12, 49. John chapter 12, verse 49. says, because I spoke not from myself, but what the Father who sent me has given me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. The Father who sent me gave me a commandment of what I should say and what I should speak. So again, what we get ready to read in Exodus 23 is not just some, it's not just Yah sending someone with his authority, but he's also sending him with his name and with the command. More than likely, it's the chief messenger over the nation of Israel, Mikael. But here st it's still a precedent of what we see he did with Yahushua when he sent Yahushua in the flesh. He sent Yahushua in the flesh with his name, with his authority, and with a command. Now, if we see him, what I was saying to them before you came back is, if we see a precedent of y'all doing that same thing with someone in Torah, then we know it wasn't wicked or different when he did it with Yahushua. Okay? 
Exodus 23, starting at 20. Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 through 23. Have a seat at the table, please. Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 through 23. And it reads, See, I am sending a messenger before you to guard you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Be on guard before him. Obey his voice. Y'all telling you to obey somebody else's voice. Obey his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he is not going to pardon your transgression. He's been given the authority from Yah to either pardon or not pardon your transgression. That's precedent. Because my name is in him. But if you diligently obey his voice, if you diligently obey his voice and shall do all that I speak, then I shall be an enemy to your enemies and a distresser to those who, do who distress you. For my messenger shall go before you and shall bring you into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Pezzarites, or the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hillites, and the Yebusites, and I shall cut them off. Truth be told, this is Messiah telling you, I'm sending, I'm sending um, a chief messenger in front of you. And if you do what he's telling, telling you to do, then I will be with you again. Even before you deal with me, do what he told you to do. I'm sending him with my authority. What does Messiah say? I'm sorry, why does Messiah say no one knows him but the Father? Why does Messiah say no one knows me but the Father? Consider this, Deuteronomy 4 and 12. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 12. Give me a 12, uh, 7 when you get there. 7. Okay. Hallelujah. And you who spoke to you out of the midst of the fire, and you heard a voice of words, but saw no form. You only heard a voice. You heard a voice, saw no form. You only heard a voice. Exodus 33 and 19. You're at Exodus 33 and 19? All right. Not a jail wait. <laughs> Exodus 33 and 19 says, and he said, I shall cause all my goodness to pass before you, and I shall proclaim the name of Yahuwah before you. Is this Yah proclaiming the name of Yahuwah before Moses? No. You remember what this is talking about, right? Moses said, I would like to see you. He said, hey, okay, you can't see me because I have no form. But I'm going I'm to cause a cloud to pass before you. And I'm going to proclaim the name of Yah before you. Okay. It's not Yah proclaiming the name of Yah. And I shall have favor. I'm sorry. And I shall favor him whom I favor. And shall have compassion on him whom I have compassion. Verse 20. 33 and 20. But he said, you are unable to see my face. For no man sees me and lives. The nation of Israel dealt with the word in Torah. The nation of Israel dealt with the word in Torah. He only said what Yah told him and did what Yah told him. Does that sound familiar? The word said and did what Yah told him. Let's go back to John chapter 12 again, verse 49. I, I know I'm going back over this again, but this is what it's saying. I spoke not of myself, but the Father who sent me gave me a command of what I should say and what I should speak. Move on to verse 50. And I know his command is everlasting life. Where is he saying something different in Torah? I know his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, as the Father has said to me, so I speak. John speaks of the word as a he. Was John confused? I know y'all think Paul is confused. Was John confused too? Okay. Well, you may not believe John, but I believe John because John is saying the same thing that the prophets said. 
John is saying the same thing that the prophet said, and I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to show you scripturally how John is saying the same thing that the prophet said. John chapter 1, verse 1. Okay? And it reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Elohim, and the Word was Elohim. Verse 2. He was in the beginning with Elohim. All came to be through him. We just read all of the same thing, right? If John was wrong, if John was wrong, if he was confused, we should not be able to see any representation of the word in the Tanakh as an entity, as a he. We shouldn't be able to see that in the so-called Old Testament if John didn't know what he was talking about. Now, we know that the prophets, the prophets often spoke of the word coming to them and speaking to them and even quoting Yah, saying, thus says Yah. Thus says Yah this, thus says Yah that. But let's take a closer look at the book of Ezekiel. Let's look at what the prophet Ezekiel said. And I'm going to ask you, was Ezekiel confused? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> right. If Ezekiel was confused too, then everybody. You look, close your book, <laughs> sell it, put it away somewhere, because you just don't believe in the Bible. Yeah, find find something else. So let's look at Ezekiel, chapter one, verse three. Give me a seven when you're there. I got speed races now. <laughs> All right, Ezekiel chapter one, verse three says. Just we're gonna lay the foundation of what Ezekiel was talking about. So just like most of the other prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, he starts in the same way. And the word of Yah came to me, right? But Ezekiel says, and the word of Yahuwah came expressly to Ezekiel the priest, son of Buzi, in the land of the Kassadim by the river Kabbalah. And the hand of Yah came upon him there. Now I'm gonna skip a lot of what the word of Yah came to Ezekiel and 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 uh I'm gonna skip a lot of his description. I want to get to the to the meat of exactly what he said. Let's skip down to verse 26. I'm gonna read verse 26, 27, and 28. Because what happens is in between verse 3 and 26, 27 and 28, Ezekiel was the only prophet who actually described what he saw when the word of Yah came to him. So that's what's going on. So in his description, when he gets, he starts at the bottom. Y'all are familiar with this. I saw wheels within wheels and flashing lights. And he, he starts at the bottom of what he saw and works his way up. Now above the wheel was something that looked like a cherry. Above that was an expanse. So that's what we're picking up. And above the expanse, over their heads, the chariots had heads with three heads facing three different directions and all of that. So above their heads was the likeness of a throne. Ezekiel 1 and 26. In appearance, like a sapphire stone. And on the likeness of the throne was a likeness as the appearance of a man high above it. Above the throne would look like a man high above the throne. 27. And from the appearance of his waist upward, I saw what looked like glowing metal with the appearance of fire all around within it. And from the appearance of his waist downward, I saw what looked like fire and brightness all around. 28. As the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance I'm sorry, yeah, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the esteem of Yah. And when I saw it, I fell on my face and I heard the voice of one speaking. So now you see, Ezekiel described what all the other prophets saw when the word of Yah came to visit him. You also see it referred to, it referred to the word of Yah as the esteem of Yah. 
they were not confused. Ezekiel wasn't confused. John wasn't confused. This is why he says no one knows the Father except him. All those prophets was dealing with the word of Yah. Ezekiel described. Okay? Remember when Moses asked who he was talking to? Let's check that out. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, look at verse 13. We'll read 13 through 15. Exodus 3, 13 through 15. And it says, And Moshe said to Elohim, See, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The Elohim of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? Now, the one he's speaking to, Malach Yahuwah, says to Moses, right after that, I will be or exist however I decide to be or to exist. I don't have a form. I, when, I came, when I came to, uh, um, when I come to, who we just read, Ezekiel, I came to him and this is what I presented. This is the form that I showed him in order for him to describe because I know that there's going to be some confusion about this later on. <laughs> when I came to you, I came to you in a burning bush. But I'm going to appear however I decide to appear. So that's what he says. Elohim said to Moshe, I am that which I am. Eya asha eya. Eya asha eya. That word haya, when you look at it in the Hebrew, simply means to exist. I will exist however I choose to exist. Malak Yahuwah tells Moses, that the important thing for him to tell the children of Israel is that the father, Yah, has sent him. Period. So he says, I will be and exist however I choose to be and exist. But, but if you're going to answer and say to them, who sent, you, who sent you, tell them Yah sent you. Because I'm doing what Yah told me and I'm sending you to do what Yah telling you. I'm a messenger of Yah. Period. And I'm sending you to be a messenger of Yah. So he says in verse 15, And Elohim said further to Moshe, Thus you are to say to the children of Israel, Yahuwah, Elohim of your fathers, Elohim of Abraham, Elohim of Yitzhak, Elohim of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my remembrance through all the generations. This is what you need to remember. You need to remember Yahuwah. You need to remember that everything that's happening is through the power of Yahuwah. Whether it's a messenger, whether it's a prophet, a righteous prophet. Because <laughs> we talked about those prophets speaking their own words. Righteous prophet, body of Mashiach, it's all the power of Yah. When he came in the flesh, he spoke the same way? Yeah. He, he spoke the exact same way. He spoke the exact same way. When he finally pitched the tent amongst men, yep. he spoke the exact same way. The exact same way. This is why I can't understand, unless unless you're just not reading Torah, I don't understand how you don't see it. Because Mashiach came, and, and as you said, he spoke the exact same way as what we read the word speaking in, in the Old Testament. Thus says Yah. I'm the one coming to you, but listen to me. Thus says Yah. Keep my commands. That's right. That's right. The word had no physical form before he was sent into the flesh. Isaiah 53 and 2. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 2. And it reads, For he grew up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or splendor that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should desire him. Now, if you're a Jew, I understand. What does he read? What, what are you talking about? Well, you skip over this. Yeah, you, you pretend like Isaiah 53 don't even exist because you cannot read the entire chapter of Isaiah 53 and think this is speaking of anyone other than Mashiach. It describes Mashiach to a T. And if it's not talking about Mashiach, explain to me who it's talking to, who it's talking about. Impossible. When he came in, in a Tanakh? In the flesh? 
No. I don't, we don't deal with that in this. Okay, but that, that just, that's, that's just, that's just going to show you. That he has no form. You're right. So, so, uh, so what uh, Maisha is, is pointing out is even in, even in the walk of Mashiach when he came in the flesh, after he was resurrected, you read the apostles mourning him. And he come in the midst of them. Don't show anything, please. He, he come in the midst of them and they don't even recognize him. Not until he decides that he's okay with them recognizing him. He speaks to them and they don't even recognize him. They don't recognize because him he can. That's right. Because he can be in the form that he decided to be in. It's by the words they know. That's my right. Sheep know my sheep know my that's why we was able to see when he was speaking to Moses. That's what's up. He speaks the same. He speaks the, the same. The only time there was a physical form that was consistent was with that tent that he pitched through the womb of Mary. Mary. That's the only consistent form that there was. Once that once that earthen vessel was returned to the dust, it's back to appearing how I want to appear. Pretty much. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for you for you to say you believe in the Messiah, but don't believe that that Yahushua was in the so-called Old Testament. You believe that Yahushua died and resurre was resurrected at the right hand of Yah, right? Do you believe that he was resurrected or not? Because now my question to you is, what form do he take now? Right, right. You don't understand that Yahushua could have been in the so-called Old Testament without a physical form. What form do he take now? Or do you believe he's still dead? Right, good question. There's no understanding of the scripture. No understanding of Torah. No understanding of the scriptures. Meaning they don't recognize what the word speaks. What you what you on a dangerous path to if you say you messianic but don't see Messiah in the Torah is non messianic belief. Because they also don't see Messiah in Torah. So be careful. Um let's move on to verse three, Isaiah fifty three. Despised and rejected by men, a man of pains, knowing sickness. And as one from whom the face is hidden, being despised, and we did not consider him. Isaiah 53, one of my mother's favorite chapters, goes on to say, by his stripes we are healed. That's Old Testament. By his stripes, what's a stripe? Well, Old English, by, by his affliction, we are healed. There's a precedent again for us being healed from someone else being afflicted, afflicted outside of an animal. Isaiah, unless you don't believe that's Torah. <laughs> Isaiah made a mistake. Well, like I say, if Isaiah is mistaken and Ezekiel's mistaken and Genesis is mistaken, because you don't believe in Genesis 6, and man, look, close your Bible up. And, yeah, you don't believe in the Bible. Pick up the Quran, because that's what you believe. I see. <laughs> Dissecting the Old Testament, just whatever they teach you They're not creating tall ones. They're not creating tall ones. They're right. creating dependence. That's right. So they want the wall to sit around them. Right. And to create, to keep stroking their ego, right. saying, oh, great master, great master. Right. And so you need to look at the spirit of, you know, you you post to, you post to, if y'all gave you the insight, mm -hmm. you supposed to share that insight and then send them out. Right. To continue their walk and their to continue to share insight. Because that's the way we're saying it. That's the way the body is being built. That's the way the body is. The real body. That's not how it's happening. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So, again, my question was concerning Isaiah 53. Why is it that non-Messianics and Jews don't deal with it? You know what I'm saying? Um, and I believe it's because it confirms the writings of John. Yeah, come on. If, if they was to accept Isaiah 53, there's no way you could see Isaiah 53 and, and not see that John knew what he was saying. You know what I mean? Example. Isaiah 53 and 3, we just read it. Despised and rejected by men. Let's look at John 1 and 11. John 1, 11 and 12. It says, He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the authority to become children of Elohim, to those believing in his name. Remember, this even applied to the flesh born Yahushua. In addition to what you were saying, Matthew 3 and 16. Matthew 3 16. We read this earlier. And see, the heavens were opened, and he saw the spirit of Elohim descending like a dove coming upon him. So Yahushua the flesh born, Yahushua even received the spirit. Then we read, and see a voice out of the heavens saying, This is my son, the beloved, in whom I delight. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2, verse 23. 1 John chapter 2, verse 23. Good. No one denying the Son has the Father. The one confessing the Son has the Father as well. One spirit, one flesh, one body. One teaching. A high. Properly united. Is this stuff just made up for the New Testament? We, I mean, we keep showing you the foundation of these concepts, these precepts, all the way from the Tanakh. Let's go back to Numbers again. Numbers 15 and 30. Numbers chapter 15, we're going to read verses 30 and 31. Okay. So we just read, no one denying the Son has the Father, right? In the so-called New Testament. Okay. Numbers 15, 30. But the being who does whatever defiantly, whether he is native or stranger, he reviles Yahuwah. And that being shall be cut off from among his people, because he has despised the word of Yahuwah. And has broken his command. That being shall certainly be cut off. His crookedness is upon him. If you think that's a fluke, let's go to another. Let's look at Proverbs 13, 13. Seven, what'd you say, seven, 11? Proverbs 13, 13. Proverbs 13, verse 13 says, he who despises the word is destroyed. The word is the Ruach HaKodesh. The Ruach HaKodesh had a name. Had a name. Did you go over that scripture already? In every lesson we do, in every study we do. I didn't I didn't do it in this one. In every study we do. We can look at it again. He who despises the word is destroyed, but he who fears the command is rewarded. What are you rewarded with? Deliverance. Deliverance. Okay. Dawid the prophet said this, Psalms chapter 2, verse 1. Psalms chapter 2 verse 1 reads, Why do the nations rage and the people meditate emptiness? That's what you're doing. You're meditating on emptiness. No, no, Yahushua, no. He, he was just a man. Mary snuck out, her and Joseph, and they got together before the marriage. So Mary was a Mary, Mary, Miriam. I'm not even going to say that because I feel like that's, that's blasphemy. But that's what they saying. Yeah. That's emptiness. It's okay. It's, it's, it's emptiness. But no, but you you asking. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. You asking. You asking. And that's what I'm saying. That's vanity. That's worthless. That's what the word says. And then he said, Joseph was worthless. You know, the 
That's what they that's Ultimately, that's what you're trying to say. And what I'm saying is, I'm agreeing with Proverbs 2 and 1, which is what you meditate on, is vanity, is emptiness. You who truly do, who truly believe, you who don't truly believe, Yahushua is who he says he is, that's exactly what this study is about. Verse 2. The sovereigns of the earth take their stand. The rulers take counsel together against Yahuwah and against his Messiah. We in Proverbs, we're not in the New Testament. And against his Messiah and say, let us tear apart their bonds and throw away their ropes from us. We don't want to be connected to Yahushua, to the Father. Again, look, I'm, look I, I can't make this up. I can't make this up. First John chapter two, verse 23 says, no one denying the father, no one denying the son has the father. The one confessing the son has the father as well. It's a package deal. You can't get to the father without the son. Okay, good. Now David comes back and says, the sovereigns of the earth take their stand and the rulers take counsel together against Yahushua, I'm sorry, against Yahuwah and against his Messiah and say, let us tear away their bonds. Let's disconnect Yahusha from Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. Let's not let's 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 not allow the Messiah and the Father to be one, properly united, and throw away their robes from us. So you know, you I mean, it may be it may be a self fulfilling prophecy, but your spirit knows. Then once you tear the bonds from, from Yahushua, you also disconnecting yourself. That's what David said. You believe in David, right? That's what David said. You're saying, let's throw away their ropes from us. He who was sitting in heaven is laughing at you. That's what David said. He who's sitting in heaven laughs. You who are mocks at them. Then he speaks to them in wrath and troubles them in his rage saying but i i have set apart my sovereign in zion my set apart mountain i inscribed for a law yahuwah has said to me you are my son today i have brought you forth yahuwah said I have set apart my sovereign in Zion. My set apart mountain. I have described for a law. Yahuwah said to me, you are my son. Today I have brought you forth. Closing it out. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6. <laughs> okay, wrapping it up. Second Thessalonians 2, Marie 6 through 10. Now you know what restraints for him to be revealed in his time. For the secret of lawlessness is already at work. Only until he who now restrains comes out of the mist. Then the lawless one shall be revealed, whom the master shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and bring to naught with the manifestation of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power and signs and wonders of falsehood, and with all deceit of unrighteousness in those perishing, because they did not receive the love of the truth in order for them to be saved. That's you, Mr. and Mrs. Nine Messian. Here's the facts. Yahushua is the Messiah. His name means Yah is deliverance. He was called the Word. But his name has been in the earth. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Have a seat at the table.
And it reads, Elohim therefore has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Psalms chapter 8 verse 4. You can read the rest of that too. That at this name every knee shall bend and every head shall bow. Whether in the heavens or on earth. You can read the rest of that. Skipping over to Psalms chapter 8 verses 4 and 5 and 6. And it reads What is man that you remember him? And son of man that you visit him? Yet you have made him a little less than Elohim and have crowned him with esteem and splendor. You made him rule over the works of your hands. You have put all under his feet. Let me ask you a question. What son of man is Dawid talking about right there? He's not talking about himself. Now we speaks of Yahusha again. Psalms chapter 45, verses 6 and 7. You know why? Because she actually got scriptures right in front of her. And she looking down and dipping to the baseball. You just reading off the screen. Psalms 45 and 6. Read. Your throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. The scepter of your reign is a scepter of straightness. Pay attention. Don't miss it. You have loved righteousness and hated wrongness. Therefore, Allahim, your Allahim, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Mm. Read it again. Your throne, O Allahim, Dawid is speaking to his master, the one that sits at the right hand of the heavenly father, Yah. Got it? The one who he said, sit here until I make all your enemies a footstool. That's who Dawid is talking to right here. Your throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. The scepter of your reign is the scepter of straightness. You have loved straightness and hated wrongness. Therefore, Elohim, your Elohim, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Listen, back when I was still trying to complete my reading of the scriptures from beginning to end, this question came up of whether or not Yahushua was in the so-called Old Testament. I said, I'm not, I don't know. I got to finish reading before I can really delve into that. That's a deep question. And I'm not going to presume anything. I said, I don't see it right now. But I was so, so short in my study that I had no precepts to, to, to veer one way or another. But there were several scriptures that you read and it's just like, how do we explain this? This is one of them. Who is David talking to? Now either David is confused, crazy, he got the mad cow, what is it? Or David is clear on what he's saying. Okay. His name, the name that was already in the earth. Let's go to Zechariah chapter three. We're going to start at verse 1. We're going to read 1 through 8. Zechariah chapter 3. Thank you. Verses 1 through 8. Ready? Yeah. <clears throat> Prophet Zechariah says, And he showed me Yahushua, the high priest, standing before the messenger of Yahuwah, and Satan at his right hand to be an adversary to him. And Yahushua, I'm sorry, and Yahuwah said to Satan, Yah rebuke you. Satan, Yah who has chosen Yerushalayim, rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fly, from the fire? Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? And Yahushua was dressed in filthy garments. This is symbolic. Yahushua was dressed in filthy garments and was standing before the messenger. Verse 4, And he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Remove the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your guilt from you. The filthy garments, symbolic of sin, symbolic of guiltiness. 
And he says, see, I have removed your guilt from you or the guilt from you and shall put costly robes on you. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. The clean turban is symbolic. Then they put a clean turban on his head and they put garments on him. And the messenger of Yahuwah stood by. And the messenger of Yahuwah witnessed to Yahusha, saying, Thus says Yah, what? Malak Yahuwah witnessed to Yahusha the priest, said, Thus says Yah. The word of Yah told Yahusha the high priest, said, Thus says Yah. Okay. We got a pattern here. I hope y'all see it. Thus says Yah of hosts. If you walk in my ways, if you guard my duty, then you shall also rule my house and also guard my courts. And I shall give you access among these standing here. Verse eight. Now listen, Yahusha, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you, for they are men of symbol. What I'm doing is symbolic. You, Yahushua, the high priest, and those who are with you, what I'm doing is symbolic. You know, Satan was there. And Satan was there. And the messenger of Yah. And the messenger of Yah. I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. Scripture says this man, Yahushua, and what happened here were a sign. But a sign for what? Let's see. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter 4. Verse 2. My children is racing in the background. <laughs> racing to get to these scriptures. Well, hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2. In that day, the branch of Yahuwah shall be splendid and esteemed. Okay? Zechariah chapter 3, verse 8 says, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. Yeah. This is the name, Yahushua. Yeah, we're gonna go back. But see, the, the issue is, I want I want it to be clearly understood what's going on. That it's not just the name. This whole transaction was symbolic. When he says, when he says to him, if you, when he says to him, if you walk in my ways, this is how you know Yahushua was righteous. Yahushua studied Torah. Yahushua understood what happened here. So when Yahushua was a child and studying before the high priest in his childhood at 12, he understood this. He understood that this was speaking to him. He said, look, if you guard my commands and you walk in my ways, then you shall rule my house. This is what I'm bringing you forth for. You shall rule my house and guard my courts, you and the men that surround you. You and the ones that you choose out to be your top ones, they're gonna have a special place. Okay, so, but I wanna just, I wanna make it very clear that when he says, these are men of symbol, for look, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch, you gotta understand what that's talking about. So Isaiah 4 and 2 says, in that day, the branch of Yah shall be splendid and esteemed. That's the branch. Isaiah 11 and 1. Isaiah 11, 1 says, And a rod shall come forth from the stump of Jesse and sprout from his root and be fruitful. Jeremiah 23 and 5. See the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I shall raise for Dawid. If you think Dawid is the branch, the, the, the stump of Jesse that sprout forth uh, from his roots is going to sprout forth from Dawid. It's not It's not Dawid. Although Dawid is going to have a throne, it's going to sprout forth from Dawid. So it can't be Dawid and have come from Dawid. Okay? So, and I'm in the so-called Old Testament. It's not New Testament. See, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I shall raise for Dawid a branch of righteousness. And a sovereign shall reign and act wisely and shall do right ruling and Righteousness in the earth. This wasn't Dawid. This wasn't Shlomo. Shlomo didn't reign in righteousness. The kingdom was stripped 
from him for his unrighteousness. All right, let's go back to Zechariah chapter 6 this time. Verse 9. Starting at verse 9, we're going to read 9 through 12. And it says, And the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Receive the gift from the exiles from Heldai, Tobiah, Yediah, who have come from Babel. Then you shall go the same day and enter the house of Yoshai and Zephaniah, and you shall take the silver and gold, make a crown, set it upon the head of Yahusha, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and you shall speak to him, saying, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, saying, See, the man whose name is the branch. Mm. Mm. Yahusha's name is the branch. Mm. So all those prophecies about the branch that was coming forth was about Yahusha. Yahusha, the high priest that's being spoken of here, is symbolic of Yahusha who's coming in the flesh through the womb of Mary. He wasn't the one who was going to build the house because we read that Yahuwah says, where's this house you can build for me with your hands? You can't build a house for me with your hands. I don't dwell in houses made by hands. That Yahusha was a high priest of a house built with hands. That did happen physically. I'm not denying that. But Yahusha, who came in the flesh, is building a house of men. Me. He's building a body of men. He's building a temple for Yah of men. Vessels that Yah can dwell in. He can put his spirit in that can be what y'all like to quote in Psalms where it say um, 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 mm, what's that scripture say? Uh, I have said you are gods. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But, but there will be a time when you get changed. If you're righteous, if you walk these things out, if you're a part of that. What'd you say? If you're part of that house. Of that house. Absolutely. If you're a part of that body, you will be changed at that time. That's not now. So he says, Zechariah 6 and 12. See the man whose name is the branch. And from his place, he shall branch out and he shall build the temple, the house, the dwelling place of Yah. He, Yahushua, shall build the dwelling place of Yah. I pray that's clear. I pray that if you was listening to that, you received some understanding. If you was listening to that and received understanding, let all this thing be to Yahuwah, Mahashem Yahushua. Hallelujah. Shalom.